Chapter 44 Hashtag Hashtag Otogekure Hashtag Hashtag Somewhere deep in Otogekure, in a cave almost pitch black stood a single figure, stoically looking towards his enemies. The cave looked more like a fighting arena than anything else. Huge stone walls surrounded the battlegrounds. A single man stood in front of hundreds of enemies. He had but only one purpose, to kill them all. The figure calmly observed his enemies as they tensed for battle. The figure calmly removed his blade from its sheath. Even in the dark cave, the sword glistened. It was a simple chikudo, a straight one-edged blade with a black hilt. The sword glistened once again as the figure suddenly disappeared and reappeared on the shoulder of one of his enemies. The figure swinged his blade effortlessly and watched as the enemy's head fell to the ground. Blood spurted from the wound but the figure had already vanished. The blade sparkled with electricity as it electrocuted multiple enemies. The figure ventured deep inside the arena where the only thing visible were the sparks of the sword. Squelch. Thumb. With a single stroke of his blade, enemies fell by the groups. The figure had yet to receive a single drop of blood in his clothes. An enemy managed to hit the figure with a fierce punch. The figure poofed in smoke to reveal that it was a clone. The enemy didn't even have time to understand what happened until he was pierced in the chest by the figure. Magnificent a dark voice whispered in a corner. The said figure had golden eyes with a black vertical slit. He was a tall man with extremely pale skin, waist-length black hair and purple markings around his eyes. And they say hard work can outgrow a genius Orochimaru said chuckling darkly. Genetics is what determines the skill of a shinobi Orochimaru licking his lips. Orochimaru was watching another figure train. This figure had a white long-sleeved shirt which was open at the torso. He wore dark blue pants with a blue cloth hanging from halfway up his stomach to his knees. He also wore black arm guards that covered his forearms and stretched up to reach his upper biceps. He also wore a purple rope belt around his waist, tied in a bow, in which he carried his sword. Katan, Gukaku no Jutsu, great fireball technique, the figure said as he released a massive fireball towards his enemies melting three of them. The figure ducked beneath a punch and disappeared in a show of speed. He reappeared a few meters away only to watch his enemy's body being split in half. The figure continued his onslaught upon his enemies. They stood no chance against this figure who had superior speed, strength and sight. The figure disappeared and another group of enemies fell to the ground. He flicked his sword and let the blood fall to the ground. The figure turned backwards to gaze at Orochimaru. His black locks of hair flowed freely in the wind. Blood-red eyes with three black tomos gazed impassively towards Orochimaru who couldn't help but smirk. A thousand enemies stood before him and he didn't even flinch Orochimaru thought to himself. You have done well Orochimaru said walking into the arena and placing his hand on his shoulder young Sasuke Kuen Orochimaru said chuckling. I live to serve you Orochimaru sama Sasuke replied as he bowed his head. Both of them turned around as they saw the Edo Tensei form of Kabuto walking towards them. Of you go Sasuke Kuen Orochimaru said. As you wish Orochimaru sama Sasuke said bowing deeply and calmly walking out of the room. Kabuto watched as Sasuke left the arena and walked away before turning to his master. He has matured well Kabuto stated and Orochimaru could only nod. How long do you think it will take until his physical conditioning is complete? Orochimaru asked Giddy to take his new vessel. I'd say about a couple more weeks. He's already invulnerable to all poisons and he has accepted the curse seal very well with full control over the level 2. All in all, I would say that he's an A-rank shinobi bearing on S-rank Kabuto explained and Orochimaru nodded, agreeing with the analysis. Though I wonder why you called him Sasuke Kabuto stated pushing his glasses up. He's supposed to be a clone from the original Sasuke so I think that he should have the same name Orochimaru said shrugging his shoulders. In the meantime, get him a friend Orochimaru said chuckling darkly. A friend? Kabuto asked confused until Orochimaru nodded. You wish for him to awaken the man GQ Kabuto stated and Orochimaru only chuckled. You realize that he's a half-blood. Unlike Naruto Kuen he's going to go blind should he ever use them too much Kabuto explained but Orochimaru shook his head in denial. There are many ways to prevent the loss of sight Orochimaru said. Many ways Kukukuku. Hashtag hashtag Senja compound hashtag hashtag. A new day was just arriving at Kanoha. It was summer and, as such, it was already a pretty warm day. Kanoha always had a nice weather, neither too hot in the summer of too cold in the winter. Not that it mattered for our favorite couple who were lying down together in their bed. Naruto was lying on the bed with Hinata lying on top of his chest. 
Both of them were awake, they were just enjoying the company and warmth of the other. Hinata shivered as Naruto softly ran in his hand over her back. Hinata looked up to see Naruto deep in thought. What are you thinking so hard about? Hinata asked. Naruto looked down from the ceiling and into Hinata. Nothing, Naruto said gently kissing her forehead. I'm just going through the things I learned from the Akatsuki, Naruto said sighing. Why don't you tell me? I might be able to help Hinata said and Naruto nodded. Sure, but first I need to tell you a story Naruto said and Hinata raised an eyebrow. It was a time of war. And so Naruto told her everything he knew about the origin of Chakra, Rakuta Sinin and the Jibi, their battle, the creation of the tailed beasts and the sealing of the Geta Mazo in the moon for protection. Wow, Hinata said surprised that Naruto knew so much about how it all began. So the Akatsuki plan on sealing all of the beaches on this statue to bring forth the Jubi? Hinata asked and Naruto pondered. Well, they didn't exactly say that they wanted to bring the Jubi, but it is the most logical outcome Naruto explained looking back to the ceiling. Why don't you summon the statue? Hinata asked confused. You said that only a Rinnegan user can summon and control the statue, Hinata explained. I can summon the statue, but doing so would reveal that I have the Rinnegan. Something that I don't want they to know as of yet, Naruto replied. Space-time ninjutsu is the pinnacle of chakra manipulation. There is nothing preventing them to summon the Getomazo back, should I ever summon it here, Naruto explained. That is my biggest problem. There is no way to keep the statue away from their hands until we kill Nagato and destroy his Rinnegan. If we destroy his eyes, we win, Naruto said. How about sending the statue to your dimension? Hinata asked, but Naruto shook his head again. The summoning jutsu can cross dimensions. Nagato can summon the Geto Mazo, no matter where it may be. I have been thinking about a seal to block the summons, but I didn't get much far. Like I said, space-time ninjutsu is the peak of chakra manipulation. Even the smallest of techniques is dangerous, Naruto explained. Have you ever thought about destroying it permanently? Hinata wondered, but Naruto only chuckled. If the statue could be destroyed the sage would have done it long ago, Naruto replied sighing. You seem to have this well thought out, Hinata said chuckling. Of course, Naruto quickly replied. I may be strong and have the Rinnegan, but I don't want to take my chances against the Jubi, Naruto said chuckling. Pussy, Kurama replied from the room. Kurama only spent time inside the seal when Naruto was gone on missions otherwise he would sleep on the floor or walk through the forests of Konoha. Says you, Naruto replied throwing a pillow at the bijou. I would like to see you against him, Naruto replied. It's only the ten tails. How much stronger than the Kyubi could he really be? Hinata wondered. It's not just the ten tails. It's the combination of all the bijou. All the power of the tailed beasts gathered under one host. It's the real god of this planet. Although he doesn't have a conscience, he's more instinctive, Kurama started. He's the primordial entity of this world. The first being, the creator and destroyer of everything. He's the one that breathed life into this planet and the only thing that can take it away, Kurama said. He's the god that created countries and has the power to swallow oceans, split the land, carry mountains and so much more. You can't even measure his power. If there was someone to refer as Mother Nature, it would be the Jubi Kurama explained as both Naruto and Hinata looked at him with blank stares. According to the legends. Should the Jubi ever be revived it would mean the end of the world, Kurama finished and Naruto blinked. Why didn't you tell me this earlier? Naruto asked, groaning. He never thought that the Jubi would be such powerful creature. You didn't ask, Kurama replied before yawning and returning to sleep. You see what I have to deal with, Naruto said, turning to Hinata, crying anime tears. Hinata could only chuckle. You don't need to worry so much, Hinata started, you are not alone in this. No man should carry this burden alone, Hinata stated. I know. But with me having the Rinnegan, I feel as if it's my duty to protect the planet, Naruto replied. But enough of this dark mood. How about we go for breakfast? Naruto asked and Hinata nodded. Hashtag hashtag Senja compound, kitchen hashtag hashtag. Morning Naruto and Hinata both said as they arrived at the kitchen, greeting everyone. H and Minato replied only for Naruto's jaw to drop. Why you? Naruto stuttered when Minato gave him the traditional Uchiha grunt. Ha 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 Kushina dropped to the ground laughing and Minato couldn't hold back a chuckle as they watched Naruto stutter. You fell for it Kushina said, but Naruto had a blank look on his face. It was a prank, Tobarama explained. Oh you are back, Naruto said, and Tobarama nodded. 
Tsunade has placed me as the new envoy towards Kiri Toborama explained and Naruto nodded. It was a really good grunt though Hashirama said, scratching his chin. Bitch please, I can do that better than him Naruto stated as he sat down on the table. I will take that bet Minato said as he and the Senja brothers stared at Naruto in concentration. The ladies couldn't help but sigh and chuckle. They are all old enough, but they can still act like children Mito said shaking her head. Isn't that why we like them? Hinata rhetorically asked and both red heads nodded. Naruto got up from the table and cleared his throat. He arched his lips ever so slightly to allow a small arrogant smirk to appear. Naruto cocked his head slightly to the side, allowing his bangs to slowly show his Sharingan eyes. H and Naruto release a deep grunt and smirked at their reactions. And oh, Minato wailed on the ground, crying anime tears. I worked so hard these last few weeks on that grunt Minato cried on Kushina's shoulder while she patted his back. There there Kushina whispered on Minato's ear. I've gotta say that grunt was a good one Toborama said while Hashirama only laughed. How can you do it so well? Minato asked curious. I'm older than you Minato explained. You didn't have to put up with Sasuke for six years in the academy. He was the epitome of Uchihanas. I heard multiple grunts every single day Naruto groaned as he explained. Ding dong. I will get it Naruto said walking towards the entrance of the compound as he heard the bell. He opened the door and was surprised to see who was at the door. Hanabi, Naruto said. The person standing in front of him was like a smaller version of Hinata. She was dressed in the traditional formal kimonos. What are you doing here? Naruto asked surprised. Naruto-sama, I hereby accept your invitation to visit the Senja compound Hanabi said and Naruto blinked as he scratched the back of his head. Yeah, sure, Naruto said as he opened the door and allowed Hanabi to enter the compound. Naruto thought it was strange for Hanabi to come this early in the morning and without a bodyguard no less. Wait here, Naruto said as he went slightly ahead to warn Hashirama and the others to put up their masks. It wouldn't be a good should Hanabi find out the identity of the dragons. An S-rank secret discovered by an academy student, like that happens all the time. We have a visitor Naruto said as both he and Hanabi entered the kitchen. Hanabi was surprised to see so many people in there. There were at least five masked persons, each mask bearing a different color. There was Tamari, Kankuro, Gara, Fu and finally Hanada. Hanabi Hanada said surprised to see her younger sister. What are you doing here? Hinata asked confused. She never in a million years expected her younger sister to come to the Senja compound. Iano Hanabi stuttered as she poked her fingers. She didn't realize there were so many people in here and that alone made her little shy. Naruto-sama said that I could visit any time Hanabi said looking down and making Hinata smile. You are among family, no need for formalities. Besides, Hayashi isn't here to see Naruto said as he sat down at the table next to Hinata. Breakfast? Naruto asked just in time to hear Hanabi's stomach rumble. She turned a shade of red that would put the old Hanada to shame. Don't mind them. They are just grown-up kids red, Kushina, said as the male snickered. Red approached Hanabi and placed a hand of her shoulder, leading her to the table and seating here to Hanada's right. Hanabi hesitantly picked up a piece of bread as Hanada smiled and turned to her, handing her the butter. She hate breakfast rather quiet and preferred to observe everyone else. Everyone talked and laughed out loud. It was such a different ambient from the Hyuga clan. The Senja clan was the only one, besides the Uchihas, that had enough status to compete with the Hyugas. And yet, the Senja weren't all uptight like her father and family. The Senja had a warm and welcoming ambient. She smiled slightly as she watched Naruto compete with the red-masked woman to see who could finish the meal faster. Everyone was sitting in random places. In the Hyuga clan, Hayashi, the clan head, always sat at the edge of the table with her daughter, the clan heiress, to his right. It was a way to signify his power and status inside the clan. But, unlike Hayashi, Naruto sat in the middle of the table. He didn't even seem to care for manners while eating. Hanabi giggled as she watched Hinata wipe Naruto's mouth as he was completely stuffed. One thing you should know about the Senju Hinata started gathering Hanabi's attention when it comes to food, especially ramen, they can put the Akimichi clan to shame Hinata said giggling as she watched Naruto glare at Red. Is it always like this? Hanabi asked in disbelief. She was surprised as to how the strongest clan in the world could act so, casual. The compound was so full of life unlike hers that gave a cold and lonely vibe. Even if the Byakugan could see through walls. 
Pretty much Hinata replied and taking a sip, though it's difficult for all of us to gather together for breakfast. Each one of us has their duties and schedules that rarely coincide, Hinata explained and watched as Hanabi picked up a napkin and cleaned her mouth very slowly. Hanabi then proceeded to straighten herself and adopt her neutral face. No need to be so formal Hanabi-chan Hinata said and watched as Hanabi's back slightly slumped backwards. How are you so strong? Hanabi muttered beneath her breath, but loud enough for Hanada to hear. Tusama always says that I'm weak and that I'll never be anything like you Hanabi said sadly breaking Naruto from his eating contest. Why would Hayashi compare you to Hanada-chan of all people? Naruto asked confused and watched as Hanabi became slightly uncomfortable in her seat with all the attention. She didn't want to come off as weak or needy. Tusama says that Hyuga blood runs strong in her. He says that I will never become strong as her and that I can only chase her shadow Hanabi said sadly making Hinata place her arm around her protectively. He's doing the same thing he did to me. And now he's undermining her because she can't reach his expectations once again Hinata thought sadly. He always has and keeps tabs on the bingo book to track your progress Hanabi replied. He says that you are probably stronger than the Hokage. That you are the first S-rank shinobi of the Hyuga clan Hanabi replied and Hinata was surprised that her father was keeping tabs on her like that. Don't worry Hanabi-chan Hinata said comforting her little sister. Me and Naruto Kuen have a plan. You just have to wait a little longer Hanada said and Hanabi looked up confused. What plan? Hanabi asked confused about what she was referring to. That is a secret Hanada said playfully poking her nose. If you want I can help you train Hanada said and Hanabi looked dumbfounded. Why would you do that? Hanabi asked confused. I've done nothing for you and in the end you would just be pleasing my father Hanabi replied frowning. Because you are my little sister and regardless of what father says, you are strong in your own right Hinata firmly replied. Really? Hanabi asked, hopefully with her eyes tearing up. Of course, Hinata replied hugging her little sister for the first time. Hanabi cried for the first time in her life. Releasing all the sadness, anger and loneliness she felt by living her whole life with an unsupportive family and a harsh and stern father. She had to leave her house to find her real home. Poor girl, Tobarama said dropping his mask as he watched Hanabi fall asleep in Hinata's shoulders. It looks like the Hyugas are taking the Uchiha's place. Either you live up to their standards, or you become an outcast, Hashirama replied sighing. Even back in the days in which he was Hokage, it was always difficult dealing with the Hyugas. Only the main branch is like that, and even then there are some exceptions, like Hanabi. But all of that will change soon enough, Naruto said in a firm tone. You should be careful to what you are planning, Naruto Minato warned. The branch house has always resented their lives as slaves. Should the main house ever falter, they might take their chance and that would lead to a civil war inside the clan Minato advised. Not with what me and Hinata-chan have planned Naruto replied. Once they become aware of what he is happening it will be too late. Our plan will be swift and effective. There will be no time for a civil war Naruto replied as he watched Hinata carry Hanabi away to their bedroom. The poor girl was exhausted. A few minutes later Hanada returned with Hannah. That prick is going to get it for not raising any of you properly Hannah said, pissed off that her husband would treat her children like this. Don't worry Kaasan. That will change soon enough Hanada assured. In the meantime. Why don't you get to know Hanabi-chan? She has never met you Hanada said and Hannah was surprised but happy since she could bond with her younger daughter. The one she never got to see. 1. Hashtag, hashtag, later that day, hashtag, hashtag. Ding dong. Uh, again? Naruto groaned to himself, propelling himself from his bed. He didn't have much to do today other than train or meditate. Everyone else was busy, the dragons were busy in Umbu, Gara and his brothers had missions with Anko, who went to the Aburim compound and Hinata was bonding with her little sister and mother. Naruto opened the door and immediately frowned at who stood at the gate. He had long, black hair, and white eyes. He wore a very traditional, loose-fitting robes with a long-sleeved, brown Hayori. Hyuga Hayashi was standing in front of Naruto with an impassive gaze, as if Naruto should be honored to be in his presence. Next to Hayashi stood a single branch bodyguard, that particular bodyguard was none other than Hyuga Niji. Long time no see Niji Naruto said and Niji simply nodded. What can I do for you Hayashi? Naruto asked and Hayashi scoffed at his blatant disrespect for his social status. And even more that Naruto greeted his bodyguard first instead of him. I've come to fetch my daughter Hayashi replied placing both hands in the opposing arm sleeve. 
I know that she came to the center compound early in the morning Hayashi replied in his monotone voice. What makes you say that? Naruto asked curious making Hayashi snort. She is only an academy student. Do you really think someone of her skill level could evade our all-seeing eyes? Hayashi rhetorically asked, almost poofing his chest with pride. A branch guard saw her and immediately informed me of what had occurred. I kept my distance and followed her here, Hayashi explained. I see Naruto simply replied. It happens that she is busy training with Hinata-chan. Why don't I drop her off at the Hyuga compound when she's done Naruto offered and almost took a step back when he saw a small smile creep into Hashi's face. You planned for this to happen, didn't you? Naruto asked, narrowing his eyes. Not entirely, Hayashi simply replied. I knew that you invited Hanabi to visit her sister and I knew very well that she would accept this offer. That is why I refused when she asked me to further her incentive into coming here and into the welcoming arms of her older sister Hayashi explained and Naruto shook his head. You are going to lose her too if you keep treating her like that, Naruto explained and Hayashi scoffed. I'm not stupid Senju-sama Hayashi replied, almost smirking. I know my daughter far better than you think I do. And I know that Hinata wouldn't hesitate to help her little sister should the need ever rise, Hayashi replied and Naruto just stared at him. I'm a realistic person. I know just how strong my daughter has become and I know that she grew into it without my supervision or guiding hands, Hayashi explained and Naruto wondered where this was going. Who better than her to mold Hanabi into a strong shinobi? Hayashi asked, slightly smirking. Naruto simply smiled as two golden chains sprouted from the ground and snared Niji. What are you doing? Niji yelled as he struggled to get free of the chains. Hayashi was about to question just that when Naruto blurred out of his sight. Hayashi didn't even understand what happened until he was pinned to the wall with Naruto pressing his arm to his neck. You bastard Naruto growled increasing his pressure and making it difficult for Hayashi to breath. You toy with people's feelings just to get what you want. You turned Hanabi into a shy girl just so she could find refuge in her sister's arms. All of that just so she could become stronger? Naruto asked glaring at Hayashi. Blood red eyes glowing and staring straight into Hayashi's white ones. Danzusama was right. Power is the only thing that matters in our world. Everything else is just a fairy tale. Do you really think that Kanoha became the strongest of the five nations by playing by the rules or saying that the pen is mightier than the sword? Hayashi asked. You are nothing but a naive kid Hayashi replied making Naruto increase his grip. I, I will do whatever it takes to keep our lineage strong and unyielding like it has in the past Hayashi replied struggling against Naruto's grip. There are boundaries and family should be one of those. You already lost first daughter and if you keep this up you will lose Hanabi as well, Naruto said seething. And even after everything you did Hinata is still going to forgive you Naruto replied calming down. Because that is the kind of person she is, I should kill you right now Naruto replied as his Sharingan started spinning. That is enough Naruto kuen Hinata said as she arrived in a shunshin with Hanabi in tow. Naruto calmed down and released Hayashi as he fell to the ground coughing and nursing his throat. Hinata approached her father and quickly applied a healing jutsu to heal the damage he took. Thank you Hinata-chan Hayashi replied, as he stood up, smiling and making Naruto growl at him. Father Hinata said and walked very slowly to him. Hayashi almost took a step back when he saw her smiling. Hinata approached Hayashi and whispered into his ear. I'm going to keep an eye on you. If I find that you have continued this treatment of her, I will kill you myself, Hinata whispered and backed off locking eyes with her father. Understood? Hinata asked and Hayashi nodded going back to his stoic self. Come Hanabi-chan Hayashi said motioning her daughter to take his side. Hanabi hesitated for a moment before remembering what she and Hinata agreed. Reluctantly Hanabi walked forward until she was by her father's side. You are always welcome at the Hyuga clan Hayashi said towards Hinata who remained neutral. Come Niji Hayashi said as the three of them walked off. What were you thinking? Hinata asked towards Naruto. Why did you need to embarrass him? In front of Niji a branch member of all Hyugas? Hinata asked. Just trying to make him see the light but I know now that it's useless Naruto replied walking forward and placing an arm around Hinata. And don't need to worry about Hanabi. He will never do anything to her Naruto replied. What makes you so sure? Hinata wondered. Regardless of what he wants he needs an heir to the clan and Hanabi is the only viable choice. He would never give it to a branch member, Naruto reasoned. Everything he did was to ensure that he got a strong heir to lead the clan. 
I think we should move up our timetable on dealing with them, Naruto explained, and Hinata nodded. It was time to begin their plan and the preparations would take a few days. Hashtag hashtag Toby's hideout, mountain's graveyard, hashtag hashtag. A swirling sound could be heard in a cave deep beneath the earth. Toby had just arrived from his rather colorful reunion with Senju Naruto, Jinchuriki of the Kyubi. Naruto had just threatened his entire organization with death. But the problem was that the brat could back up his threats. Naruto had just killed two members of his group. The Kyubi brat intrigues me to no end Toby said to himself as he wondered how the Ghetto Mazo could react to Naruto's chakra. It was true that Naruto released enough chakra to match a bijou but even then. Something was off. The air around Toby swirled again and Zetsu was dropped to the floor. Toby narrowed his eyes at the plant-like man and wondered what he would do with him. What do you intend to do, the white Zetsu asked breaking Toby from his thoughts. If I gave an order that would conflict with Naruto's orders. Whose orders would you follow? Toby wondered. My allegiance is to my maker, so Madara-sama's blood will always be my master the white Zetsu replied making Toby curse in his breath. And your clones? Toby asked. My clones are but blank soldiers. They can be programmed to obey only you if that is what you wish Zetsu replied making Toby smile behind his mask. Excellent, Toby replied. What will you do now? Zetsu asked. Naruto revealed that I'm not Uchiha Madara to the whole group at once. That will make Nagato an unstable pawn on my side. I will have to tread carefully dealing with him as of now, Toby replied bringing his hand to his chin. If it comes to that I will personally kill him and takes his Rinnegan, Toby said sighing. Though he still had his uses, Toby said chuckling. We will let things unfold for now. Let's wait and see what Naruto's next move is Toby said as he walked off into the hideout. In the meantime I going to give Naruto a little present Toby said smirking behind his mask. I'm going to show him that I am no prey Toby said looking at the shinobi kneeling in front of him. I have a mission for you Toby said making the shinobi rise her head and display her glowing blood red eyes. Now Chan. If you want to support me check out my Patreon at https colon slash slash www.patreon.com slash kayashin. I tend to polls that decide important plot stuff in my P at Trian. Many thanks to my awesome patrons. Ben Phillips. If you like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you later, bye bye.